How you doing guys? Bada Bing here, thanks for joining me. Today we'll be looking at the GHK 553 gas blowback rifle. The 553 was released in July of this year, 2018, and it's another oddball choice from GHK. Previously they released the first mass production gas blowback org, which came out of nowhere. It was a bullpup that no one expected to be made. The 553 was another pleasant surprise, a breath of fresh air. What's it all about? So Moon sent me this rifle which came in the usual plain cardboard box. Inside you'll find a very basic manual, speed loader, 30 round magazine and the rifle. So Moon threw in an additional box of accessories containing GHK silicone oil, spare speed loader adapters and a couple of Samoon Moon pens accompanying my new rifle. Cheers guys! The rifle itself. Once you pick it up you get a sense of its rigid construction. It's as solid as solid can be, no play in any of the surface parts, nothing. The feel of it oozes quality. The majority of the build is steel, and the receiver is treated with a Cerakote SIG grey finish. The upper receiver has a rough texturing to it, and the lower receiver is the same, but slightly less so. It has a dull look to it. I think it looks great, and they've also replicated the spot weldings along the body of the upper. The plastic used on the handguards, pistol grip and stock are all moulded from a strong reinforced nylon fibre and it has a wicked matte black finish. The side folding buttstock especially is a finely crafted piece which locks into place firmly and requires brute force to snap onto its locking pin on the right side of the foregrip. Equally it requires a good tug to unseat it when extending. The features and controls are like you see on the real 553. Starting at the front we have an industry standard 14mm negative thread underneath the 3 prong flash hider, a small flip up iron sight blade which can be adjusted for windage and a built in sling loop. Making our way past the handguards it has a 20mm optics rail with its low profile integrated rear flip up iron sight and dual sling loops. The stock iron sights present here are nothing fancy, but are faithful reproductions of the real sights. Using my Holosun HS403A, they can be seen by looking directly through the mount. The 553 selector switch is ambidextrous and has a stiff throw when rotating through the selections. Major brownie points for the 3 round burst mechanism which will be a great time when it comes down to shooting. What's cool is the flick down select fire cutoff hook which can lock both multi-fire functions, leaving you with semi-automatic only. Great touch! This rifle has a lot in common with AKs. The magazines lock into place just like on an AK, and the charging handle is on the right side, just like an AK. Charging the rifle feels satisfying, the handle itself is large and easy to grab onto, and it has a smooth sensation as you peel back the working parts. In typical GHK fashion, the bolt is half travel, a feature that is despised by some people. There are a number of advantages as to why GHK continue to use this method of operation. It all comes down to practicality. Why make it harder on a proven gas system borrowed from their AKs for the sake of a longer travel bolt? The reduction in gas efficiency would be a factor, as well as the rate of fire, so I'm glad that they chose the direction that they did. Fundamentally, a full travel bolt isn't going to do anything for you in the game. When the bolt is locked back, the bolt catch is very hard to engage, much like the M4. Pulling back the working parts and pushing downwards will lock the carrier, and pushing upwards will release. Using the same design as the version 2 M4, the bolt catch features a magnetic catch pin. While we've got the pins tapped out, which are a pain in the ass to remove by the way, we can see that they've made every component steel. Big heavy duty parts which look like they'll last a good while, and probably stand up to CO2, no problem. The hop up unit is also similar to the AK, both in adjustment and its material. Plastic. This is one of the first things to break on my AKM due to a bad feed jam. As soon as GHK released this 553, Maple Leaf weren't far behind with their 553 upgrade chamber set so this would be something I'd recommend for long term use. The bolt carrier shares similarities with their AK bolt. To provide room for the nozzle, the bolt carrier is longer than the real 553's. 
Due to this fact, any aftermarket companies hoping to release a full travel kit will find it next to impossible without serious modifications. The 378 gram empty magazine capacity is 30 BBs, and like the real one, it's semi-translucent. They rock and lock into the receiver nice and tight, however there are a couple of downsides that I can see to this magazine already. The first being it's quite stiff to load the BBs. Despite the amount of rounds I've put through it during my testing, it has not loosened up. Now, this could be because of GHK's infamous feed lips being a shade too narrow, or it may have something to do with the second downside to this magazine. The steel index point inside the magwell that locks onto the front portion of the mag pinches into the plastic, and this has left its mark on the shell. User reports that this can eventually stop the flow of BBs and making it dry fire. There is an easy fix for this. Simply file down the steel piece inside the magwell, or it may be actually wiser to modify the small strip on the magazine, carefully filing away just to take the pressure off, maybe all it needs. Furthermore, to eliminate the possibility of those tight feed lips cracking, you can open up the channel just a smidge for easier loading, but not too much. I'll mention that this is from the first batch, so I expect these problems will be ironed out within the next round of production. As these magazines can be connected using the lugs on the sides, I'm a bit dubious to actually use them in this manner. Having experience with similar magazines, they've been known to break. I wouldn't place a lot of faith in them, especially when they do this. So, what's it like to shoot? You ever use a GHK G5? Well, it's basically what a full steel G5 would shoot like. Shooting the 553 is a cool experience. Each shot is executed with a crisp snap and has an excellent little kick in the shoulder, just like a G5. As the bolt carrier reaches the end of its travel, it hits the rubber buffer insert and gives you that thud. Because of its short travel, it does all that very quickly, and as long as you have a fast trigger pull, you can really make this carbine sing. Now, this is where I have to pop the balloon. The trigger, it's not very good. Or it could just be me not being able to make it run fast. Either way, the take-up is spongy, and there's no definitive resistance to indicate a wall, so the travel rolls all the way through to release the shot. The reset takes a while to engage, it's nearly at its original position before it resets. For those high speed type guys, you probably won't like it. If you're someone that doesn't care as much, then it's not going to bother you. Three round burst is great fun. It lets you throw a few rounds down range in a steady rhythm. The gas system is perfectly capable of emptying a magazine with 10 quick pulls of the trigger. However, I do have an issue with my unit. Sometimes it will torch off four rounds on a burst rather than three. I'm not sure why it does this, and sadly I haven't heard of this issue from other users' feedback. Here's hoping that it's merely an issue from the first group of 553s to drop into the hands of the consumers. As I've said before, the mark of a good GBBR is whether it can burn through an entire magazine in one go on auto. Full auto mag dump part two. With the 553, it's no sweat, although I have noticed the effects of cooldown begin to creep in towards the end of the magazine. Despite it being made by those awesome guys at GHK, it's still not immune to the effects that plague all gas in mag gas blowbacks. Anyway, immediately refilling BBs for a second run, it's still able to empty the 30 rounds, but you can expect it to chug until the bolt locks back. Or it run out of gas, which is just as likely. This is an unavoidable trait of gas blowback rifles. It's just how they are. But if you are a GBBR gamer, chances are you use semi-auto 100% of the time, and this will maintain that G5 style snappiness, keeping you at the top of your game.
Speaking of miles per gallon, I found that with a 10 second fill of propane, my 553 was able to fire 155 shots before the tank was dry, which is an honourable score, seeing as it's smaller than the GHK M4's magazine. If you forget to top up the gas when you reloaded in the safe zone, you'd have enough puff left in there to go for another 30. What's the accuracy like? For a stock GHK hop-up it scored very well indeed. There was no wind when I recorded this grouping, and I was using Jeff's super precision biodegradable threes. The target at 20 meters was hit 22 times, with 8 shots flying just over the paper. The hits created a grouping smaller than my fist, and I have relatively small hands. Zero an ice optic like this Tridge, or a compact red dot sight like this Hollow Sun, and it'll be the perfect point and click carbine. The GHK SIG 553. Fair play to GHK for releasing something not yet seen on the market. Finally, the iconic Swiss rifle has been replicated in the gas blowback format. The construction is outstanding, almost too good. Those receiver pins holding the rifle together as if it's been welded shut. The Cerakote finish is a neat touch, functions are rock solid and tactile, accuracy is surprisingly excellent, it's fun to shoot, 3 round burst function is cool, it has a good gas efficiency, the hop-up is easy to access, it uses plentiful AEG spec inner barrels and buckings, the magazines are lightweight, spare parts are available from Samoon, and with Maple Leaf swooping in on an upgraded chamber set just after the release, I hope to see more future upgradability as the rifle gets older. So what's the bad news? Number 1. It's expensive. The Cerakote paint job, R&D and tooling translates into a more expensive rifle. I have gotten used to GHK releasing 40 RAM magazines for their rifles, so 30 BBs was a tad disappointing. It can be difficult to load those magazines, but it's most likely feedlips related. Like most GHKs, the hop-up chamber is plastic, the fault on my particular gun in regards to 4 round burst instead of 3, the trigger doesn't necessarily look like the one on the real 553, the trigger performance, take up and reset is unimpressive, it lacks those SIG trademarks, and if I have to look really really closely to come up with more quote unquote flaws, the half travel bolt isn't realistic. Full travel matters to some people I guess, and there's a tiny gap in the receiver which has been one of the main complaints by nitpickers. That about does it for weighing up the pros and cons. Is this gas blowback rifle worth it? Well, it's not another M4, so it's doing something right. If you're on the verge of dropping over $500 on this one, I'd say give it some time. Give them chance to gain momentum, perhaps refine the designs and I can see it being a proper little gem of the GHK gas lineup. As it stands, the general performance of this rifle is good. It's ate every BB I've put through it, each time resulting in a lovely recoil. Allow them a period of refinement, and I think you'll be good to go. They've already teased a rail handguard on top of the little rail panel accessories that are currently available. Like the G5 having its extended carbine pack, GHK will be releasing the 551 outer barrel and handguard kits, which is an exciting prospect. It would be great to see SIG 551 GBBRs hit the fields. What's even more interesting is I'm starting to see images of custom SIG trademarked rifles. Check out what Papago Arms has done, it looks awesome. Will you be buying a GHK 553? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching the video my friends, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, why not show me by hitting the like, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe and be notified when my next video goes live. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram for regular updates. So until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in a bit.